Okay, second last tip. You don't have to be a creative to be creative. And I love this. This is dear to my heart. And I hear all the presentations about the importance of a 30-second spot. And I fully get, I agree with everything that we heard from Jenny and Brent and, and Tony about the importance. I mean, there's nothing like a great 30-second spot. But I honestly think sometimes we miss the picture, which is that radio has evolved so much from the days where 95% of what went on air was 30-second spots. Now maybe 75%, 70%, and it's going to change and change is 30-second spot. So yes, it's important, but I think the really important part in growing radio revenue in the future and the success of this industry is actually about us being creative in how we plan radio. Back in 1990, I won't say that because I was having a go at the creative departments. They were all so nice this morning, so I'll leave that part out. But I, I am amazed when I think back to like 90s, to the 1990s, and I can't believe how many media campaigns were driven by the creative department back then. You know, the idea was literally everything. Once the radio spot had been completed by the creative department, the choice of stations on, on where to place it was like a mere afterthought. Uh, the advent of genuine media strategy agencies and people like, like Noti Bene has really helped to change that. It's been a pleasure to see that the shift towards advertising campaigns driven by media. And I think that's been really good for radio. I'll tell you why. Because the old style campaigns that were driven by the creative department inevitably favoured TV. That's because that's where creatives feel that they can express themselves better. And it's also generally where there's a lot more money to be made on the production side. Campaigns driven by creative media strategists, on the other, by creative media strategists, on the other hand, often tend to favour radio. And that's because radio offers so many more opportunities than TV for creative planning. The sheer range of non-traditional opportunities and products that you can get on radio, it dwarfs what you can get non-traditionally on TV. Little example here, uh, this is a client of ours, the Grahamstown, Grahamstown National Arts Festival. They had their festival in July. And for me, this was a great example of creative media planning. It's a really simple idea. But um, basically, this idea wasn't ours. This idea came from Kaya. Again, it's very simple. But the whole positioning of the Grahamstown Festival was 11 days of amazing. I mean, you hear it, you get it. But what Kaya did was, a couple of solutions they did was they just took, they have a, a feature every morning where people phone in and ask for requests, and there are 10 songs in the feature. What they did was they simply added an 11th, and they said, this is because it's 11 days amazing didn't really affect the listening experience in any way, and it worked brilliantly for the client. And the same thing was their chart show on a Saturday. When they got to number 11, they paused and did a bit of a live read, ad lib insert. Worked very nicely. So thank you, Tim. Okay, now for me, again, and you can, you, there are so many more examples, but that is a simple example of creative media planning. It won't ever win any awards, but it'll work for the client as far as I'm concerned. 